the OECD identified 12 tools of gender uh, budgeting that were used by countries in the survey. I'm not going to go through all of these in great detail, but the first they identified was ex-ante gender impact assessment, which would correspond to what you call GBA, I think, which is when the budget is in preparation and you're thinking of what measures to put in it, uh, you do uh, a gender impact assessment. What do you think is the impact of this measure on uh, gender equality? 75% of the 12 countries did that. That's one of the most popular things to do. Uh, some of them did something called a gender budget baseline analysis where you look and see what's your starting point. How are things, how are, are things at the moment um, in terms of taxation and in terms of public spending, in terms of its implications for gender equality? And I recall when first came to Canada quite a long time ago now, Stats Canada used to do a very useful analysis where it would take the, the income gap, not the earnings gap, the gender income gap, that's income from all sources, which earnings is a main one if you're of working age, but if, like me, you're retired, it's pensions. Uh, so the income gap, and they would say, what's the income gap if we just look at what the market produces? Then if we look and see what the impact the state has in terms of taxation and social security, does it narrow the gap and how far does it narrow the gap? And it did narrow the gap considerably. And I thought that was an extremely useful kind of baseline uh, analysis to do that you can bear that in mind if you're going to change any of the taxes or change any of the social security measures. And I wonder if Stats Canada still does that, because I know the whole budget for Stats Canada and the whole mandate for doing uh, gender analysis was eroded yeah, under the previous government. But I think that would be a very useful piece of analysis to bring back. There's also a gender needs assessment, uh, which is where you government tries to assess um, what are the gender equality issues that it should be addressing through consultation with politicians, with civil society and so forth. A surprisingly small number of governments did that. I, I thought the percentage would be higher than the 33%. Then a second set of tools. Um, these are um, tools um, in the actual more detailed process of construction of the budget gender perspective and performance uh, setting requirements that a minimum proportion of budget-related performance objectives be linked to gender-responsive policies. And Austria is a good example of this. Austria has uh, performance budgeting where every government department has to choose five objectives that it's going to achieve with the money that the Ministry of Finance gives to it. And one of those objectives has to be a gender equality objective, and they have to identify some indicators by which they're going to measure whether they achieve that objective or not. And I think that's a very interesting approach. It has its strengths, it has its weaknesses, but it might be an approach that Canada might like to look at in thinking how to develop uh, this further.